What's going on, everybody? This is a roaming prepper. I'm here with all the dogs running loose. That's, if you hear the running around, they're in the background fighting over God knows what. Anyway, today's topic, defensive prepping. What the heck is defensive prepping? Uh, defensive prepping is actually kind of a, my hybridization of defensive investing and prepping. So I'll be right back and I'll explain what I'm thinking of, where I've come up with this concept. Other people are talking about similar things, and I think we all kind of have the same mentality. I just kind of gave it a name. But anyway, I'll be right back. Let's talk about defensive prepping. everybody thanks for joining me this is the roaming prepper channel I'm your host Pete and I want to thank you for joining me so as of the recording of this video so so we're in March 2023 just to give you a timestamp on this one um, the Silicon Valley Bank has gone down uh, signature bank has also gone down uh, we're going into Monday Tuesday time from we're actually Monday morning now which would be the night 18th 13th sorry yeah, no glasses. And um, right now, we're expecting the market to not be pretty, right? Uh, there may or may not be a run on banks. We don't know. These are very tumultuous times, and I'm not I'm not a financial analyst, to be honest. Half the analysts uh, were telling us two weeks ago, oh, invest in Silicon Valley Bank. It's a solid win, and now the bank has collapsed. So clearly they don't know everything either so this is just the opinion of an engineer who's trying to pay attention to what's going on while his corgis and the one papillon are running around like maniacs in the living room so defensive prepping what is that well defensive prepping is instead of expanding and buying more stuff to add to your preps and there's nothing wrong with that if you can do it and stay on budget I would like to encourage everyone, at least until we see how these bank situations pan out, to take the opposite approach and to maximize what you already have. So it's a more defensive posture. So if you do invest and your stocks, some of your stocks have gone up, you may wanna either talk to your analyst or if you know what you're doing or you feel comfortable doing it, sell those stocks, but hold the cash. Don't reinvest it somewhere just yet until we get some clarity as to what's going on in the market. Um, I personally am trying to sit on a bit of a cash heavier portfolio, um, largely due to that's what companies have been doing. The Fortune 500s 18 months ago said, we're gonna be on free cash flow and we're gonna have less leverage, which means less debt, but we're gonna have more available cash in various banks or in our assets, which can be sold for cash. So take the same approach. This is a smart way to do things. So basically in an unstable market environment, the way we are now, where everything's all over the map, oil's going up, gas went down, which and they're doing this right now. The banks are collapsing. Now's not a time to panic. Now's the time to dig in, right? So one, if you can keep cash at the house, physical dollars, I would encourage you to do so, right? One, make sure you have some cash in the event banks collapse, you can still pay for the necessities. Two, now's a great time to inventory your prep. If you're gonna spend money on anything, it may be to upgrade shelving. I spent a little chunk of change upgrading for my old plastic, you know, the Home Depot shelving, which is good, you know, carries, a, you know, 100 pounds of shelf. I upgraded to a 10,000 pound commercial system. I actually found it on a really good deal, which I'll talk about another day. However, that gave me the ability to put everything up on shelves so it's not all over the house. I can now look and see what I have, what I don't have, and it's organized. I can organize it by due date or expiration date so I can use it in the reverse order of which I bought it. So basically, first in, first out. Um, you start, or yeah, first in, first out, you start pulling the inventory so you use up the older stuff first. Um, something like that might be a good investment, but if you already have a shelving system or if you know how to build one, now would be a great time instead of, you know, going and getting the Jackery. If you already have one, great. If you can budget it in, great. But if you can't, 
don't try to expand right now until we kind of see where the market's going. Instead, let's do the opposite. Let's look at what we have. Let's evaluate. Make sure you've checked your preps, check your inventory. If you can, upgrade your storage system. Organize yourself, take a good inventory. Keep a little cash on hand. All of these things will enable you if the banks fail or if the government says, hey, this is getting out of hand, we're gonna shut the banks down for a week, which will freak everyone out. You're at least in a position that you can go and get milk or you can go and get bread if you don't already have it, right? There's certain things you can only store for so long, right? That's a challenge all preppers deal with, whether you're suburban where I am right now, even though I wanna get a homestead or you're a homesteader or you're an apartment in the middle of a city. It applies to all of us. So now's a great time, take a defensive posture. Don't expand, don't buy a lot and put yourself leverage or in more debt. Instead, do the opposite. Pay down debt if you can keep on budget. Upgrade your shelving if you can keep on budget. But more importantly, inventory what you have and if you can, repurpose anything. So if you have a shelving system that's right now holding knickknacks, you know what? Get a few cardboard boxes, they're pretty cheap. Dust off the knickknacks, cover them up, put them in the boxes, and then make that shelf. Instead of storing knickknacks or storing family photos, put the photos on the wall and maybe put preps up there. You can hide the preps in the little bougie baskets or in wicker baskets, whatever you want to make it not look so ugly, but you can repurpose what you already have. Also, if you have pets like I do, I pretty much have figured out that the 35 pound of dog food will last these three potatoes and the loofah almost a month and a half. So I always have an extra bag and then the bag I'm working on. That way I know in my mind between these three guys, I can probably last two months and if I put them on a bit of a ration, I can stretch it to four months. So that takes pressure off me to keep running to the store to buy dog food, wasting gas, wasting time and wasting money when I can buy in bulk and save in the long run. So guys, that's defensive prepping in a nutshell. There are a lot of other little subtopics I can go into, but I want you guys to think about this. Have this mentality right now. Maximize what you have. Recycle, repurpose, reuse, wash it out. If you can reuse those mason jars, you got those damn Topo Chico bottles and you know how to make candles, make them into a candle, which I'm trying to figure out, but I screwed up. So I'm not gonna show you that video because it's kind of funny and awful at the same time. But guys, maximize, ladies and gentlemen, maximize what you already have. Hold on to your cash. If you're an investor, if you have a money market account or anything, take a defensive posture. Be careful of the bond market. The bonds yields have gone the other way and that's what caught Silicon Valley Bank. They had 50% of their money in bonds, but when the bonds turned the other way, and people were trying to withdraw money, they didn't have enough money to cover themselves. They invested in something that lost them value and they got clobbered. What scares me is Bank of America has 25 to 30% of their assets in bonds right now. I don't know how well they're gonna do. Now Chase has a much smaller bond exposure, plus Chase and uh, the other big bank, I just blanked out, um, they're more diversified. So even though they're taking hits domestically, their overseas bonds have gone up and they're kind of evened out. So they did their homework, but Bank of America overextended in the bonds too. So I'm hoping they can move stuff around to keep themselves covered. And remember, it's not just savings and checking. Etsy now has problems giving cash to the people who sold stuff through Etsy because Etsy had a bunch of their accounts in Silicon Valley Bank. A lot of businesses had their payrolls in that bank. Now the feds have stepped in, we don't know where that's gonna go. Now's not a time to expand, get what you need. And if you can budget it and you feel comfortable, get the Jackery or get the propane stove, whatever it is. Um, and there goes a Corgi right across. Um, Bentley and Peppermint are having a big old brawl. I have no idea what started that. Anyway, I'm gonna have to break up the potatoes before one of them actually hurts the other. Um, more than likely, Bentley's gonna get hurt by the girls because he provoked them. In any case, guys, defensive prepping. Now's a good time. Take a defensive posture. Maximize your homestead. If you can grow it, grow it. If you can breed it, I, chickens, goats, whatever, do that. If you can't do that, because not all of us can, now's a great time to inventory what you have, reorganize, reuse, repurpose, save the money. Let's see where this goes. Don't panic. 
defensive posture. Be good. I'll see you on the next video. God bless.